didn't allow it to happen. Mahorn had a lot of steam up. Looked like he was going to have the stuff after he got inside the foul line, but Ewing came out and met him. And a big bump underneath Ewing hits the floor. He's up and okay. He goes right at Barkley. How can the officials let it go this far? How can they do that? You saw that coming. Ewing is absolutely crazy. Who's the peacemaker, Rick Mahorn? Yeah, he ripped uh, Ewan's shirt off almost two seconds ago. He's got a way of expressing peace that's most unusual. And now more words. Earl Strom has thrown somebody out. Oakley. It started with Barkley going over and clearly knocking Ewing down, which went totally without response by the officials. And Ewing couldn't take it, went over and confronted Barkley, still nothing from the officials. It looked as though Patrick Ewing's contact lens has popped out. Well, it's the uh, second night in a row of physical aggression at the Garden. Only Al Arbor won't be blamed for this one. long after the initial foray between Barkley and Ewing. Now Mahorn, the peacemaker, as you say, Al, I don't think that's too peaceful. Although, I think he had good intentions in that end. Well, I really do. I think you're probably right. Yeah, you're right. Well, you know, we talked about the comedic overtones of watching these guys play, but this is when comedy isn't funny. They play a rough physical game. Ewing was knocked to the floor and immediately responded. I thought he was rushing to get back into position. Charles Ugly has been ejected. Welcome back to the Garden, where the Knicks are 9 for 9 from the floor, and Mo Cheeks has 6 assists. They leave 18 to 8, but that is not what the fans here are buzzing about. They are buzzing about an altercation that took place moments ago. Ewing on a pick that certainly could be called a moving pick. As we look at Vandoy cut across the middle, it was just as Barkley went across. Disposed of Ewing, drove him to the floor after that pick. And then Ewing responded, went over to express himself to Barkley and found himself on his backside as Barkley knocked him down. And of course, Ewing then couldn't take it any longer and went after him. And Mahorn came over to stop Ewing. And that's the end of that. In the meantime, Charles Oakley wearing a suit got very verbal and got ejected. And that was really the outcome of all of that. Jimmy Lineup is really going at it with 34-year veteran Earl Strom in his last NBA season. And it was really strange how I spoke to Earl Strom before this game. You usually don't do that. And I said, do you approach a game differently when you know the characters involved? And he said, no, I don't ever prejudge a game. And I said, how can you not do that when you know some of the combatants have a history that they have? And he said, I just don't. I judge every game on an individual basis. Barkley guarded by Walker. Fakes the lean in. Walker doesn't give him the baseline, and Ewing is there to cut off the final road to the hoop. And how about how quickly Barkley gets back and almost recovers it? He is so fast. Tricky move by Charles. Ewing there to slap it away. Barkley right on the case again. Gets around Walker, and Ewing can't stop it. He puts his body right in front of Ewing. Patrick instinctively knew it would be an automatic foul call, so he backed off. Well, when you have a body like that, it pays to figure out how to use it. You said it. No one does it better. Because lead was 10. Anderson. Wow. Way off, but Barkley is there. No one in front of him. Scott Brooks, lead pass Barkley. Gets around Cheek, but a stop by Walker. <laughs> and he's the first one to reach his hand out to pull Kenny to his feet. Full momentum. Here he comes. Six foot four. And a lot of weight. And that's just trying to stop him. I mean, there wasn't much contact. Kenny Walker interrupted the momentum of Barkley. And look at the price he paid. Look at the sweat that is dripping off almost continuously from the face of Barkley. 
several days ago by saying, I am a problem causer. And that he is, no matter where he is on the court. We see him now handling the basketball. Kenny Walker's not slow, and Barkley just dribble right by him, drawing that foul. Why do you think, John, a lot of fans have trouble figuring out whether they love him or hate him? I mean, you can enjoy watching him play, I don't, but... I don't think, uh, I really don't think people hate him. Well, hate in the fan sense of the word. I mean, you know, they love, people love to boo him here at the Garden. Well, because I, I, think, I think that's because he's an opponent. I don't think it's from the stomach. Like Mahorn, for instance, last year with Detroit, the last couple of years, did really dislike him as an opponent because of the, a lot of the things he did. But I think Barkley, it's uh, affectionate in, in a sense. Nick missed the final shot of the quarter. The Sixers erasing what was once a 10-point Nick lead and coming back to within four. It was a corner in which Barkley and Ewing almost came to blows. Back in a moment. Back in the first quarter, this game was marked by a, a rather vicious pushing incident between Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewing as Cheeks misses the jumper. Barkley threw Ewing to the floor. Ewing was right up in his face. They kind of slapped at each other a little bit. And the one who was ejected from the game was Charles Oakley in street clothes. Derek Smith fakes around. Eddie Lee Wilkins over Ewing, followed by Barkley. Back in Madison Square Garden with 3.32 to go in the half. The Knicks lead by 12. Charles Barkley was involved with the fans a few minutes ago. Yes, the game was going on, as you see. And Charles was into a verbal confrontation with some of the more active fans who are not smart, particularly if Charles were to leave his position, it wouldn't be good for them. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the, Freddie Carter right there to calm him down. Any moments later got put back into the game. Now, the Sixers come in here tonight with this eight-game winning streak. That is a good friend of Kenny Albert, reliable as that may seem. Here is what transpired at the end of the Philadelphia event. Fans were yelling at Charles Barkley. Barkley threw a tray of ice water at a fan. Fans then obviously got excited. Barkley then, it says here, spit on the fan. The fan was ejected from Madison Square Garden. That is an eyewitness account. May be the facts, may not be. Either way, it almost got ugly down at the end of the Philly bench. But the same quiet guy we spoke to in the pregame show. And you said to him, Charles, I think you'll be a little bit different yeah, in so 45 minutes so from so now. So dude. <laughs> and you were right. That is after Barkley and Ewing almost came to blows in the first quarter. Let's focus on the fisticuffs in the first quarter of play. Yeah, the fans got a little extra attraction here. Watch, there you saw Ewing being pushed to the floor by Barkley. Technical fouls were called. Charles Oakley came off the bench to receive a technical, and he has street clothes on, so he's no longer with us. There you see it again. Barkley was the instigator, so he received a technical. Ewing I rate, he was livid. But he did the right thing. He had hit about five straight jumpers, so he did not want to get ejected from the game. And shortly thereafter, Barkley got into it a little bit with a fan who was ejected from the arena. Now let's pick up some other highlights, real basketball highlights. Jackson to Ewing underneath. Yeah, action creating, Ewing vibrating, devastating with the sweet stuff. And a little bit of a stare to boot on Charles Barkley thereafter. Yeah, that was the bluffing after the stuffing. Just to set the emotional tone, which has been documented frequently throughout this game, Barkley tossed Ewing to the floor in the first half. Ewing came back, and they almost came to blows. It was just a couple of slaps before they were separated. As a result of that, Charles Oakley was ejected in street clothes. After that... Charles Barkley, who was seated on the Philadelphia 76er bench, and I spoke to three eyewitnesses to this during the halftime, got involved with some fans who reportedly were from Philadelphia and cheering for the Sixers. He threw an entire tray of ice water their way. They were unfortunately sharing a seat, so they leaped to their feet to defend themselves. He got up, spit toward their general direction, and then was immediately sent into the game by Jimmy Lynham to get him away from there. And how's everybody going to feel when it's announced that those are members of his family? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way they act. <laughs> and everyone's getting all excited. 
Ewing double team by Walker. Knicks have all kind of open players out on the perimeter. Here's Barkley hanging. And with bravado, John Barkley slaps the ball to the floor. The spirit is alive. We've got some headbutts and a 12-5 sixer run. Sixers are roaring now. And it's happening underneath the basket. Mike Chaminsky able to stop Kenny Walker's attempt. Johnny Dawkins sees the wide open hanging Charles Barkley. And Charles is ready to go. Perimeter, Hersey Hawkins on the drive. And there's the horn. We were talking about Hawkins' ability to dribble and move effectively. That was a good example of it. The next lead is three. The horn banging on Ewing, which he wasn't doing in the first half. Gerald Wilkins can't hit. And oh, now look at the horn and Ewing go at it. Oh, the horn. Somebody better say something with a whistle. Now, what official is looking? I can't understand that. These guys are ready to rip each other's faces off. Mahorn's laying it on Ewing now. Mahorn is now going into his Detroit act. Lots of unnecessary pushing and shoving as the ball moves up court. Charles Barkley got mixed up with Patrick Ewing in the first quarter. Got mixed up with some fans in an almost ugly incident in the second. He has a season-high 39 points. Patrick Ewing misses the triple-double by one block shot. Kiki Vandeweghe has 24 as the Knicks win by 10.